very likely you're going to make quite a few mistakes. Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. And today I want to talk about something a little different as it relates to language learning. And that is reward yourself in your language learning. It's going to help you. Remember, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe, click on the bell for more uh, notifications. And if you follow me on a podcast service, uh, please leave a comment. So the biggest problem that people have in language learning is that they give up. They get frustrated. They don't feel that they're making any progress and they stop continuing to listen, listen and read and study the language. And I think there are a, a number of things that we can do to maintain our motivation. But one of them is to reward yourself. Like I decided to go back to Turkish. So I was listening to Turkish while out for a walk. And while I've now forgotten a lot of my Turkish, but I recognized that I hear the words very, very clearly. I don't know necessarily what the words mean, but I hear them. So in any, whenever we're learning a language, when we're at a stage where we hear the words clearly, the, where a word ends and the next word begins, and, and we kind of notice that word very clearly, we just have to look it up. We don't know what it means or we've forgotten what it means. I give myself credit for that. I say, yeah, wow, you know, it's going to be fun relearning Turkish because I hear the words so clearly. I've mentioned before that we shouldn't, you know, get upset when we forget things or when we um, are unable to say things or when we don't understand things. It's far better to reward ourselves for the things that we are able to do. And, and that's something that we are able to do should be something that's a little difficult to do because it's a, if it's a little difficult to do, and we can reward ourselves, the brain actually likes that. Apparently there's, you know, research that talks about this being, you know, in the zone and attempting to do something that's a little difficult, but actually being able to carry it off. We have that sense of achievement. We are encouraged. The brain is gets, I don't know, a shot of endorphins or whatever, and wants to do more of that. So it's important to reward yourself. Unfortunately, traditional language instruction works more on the principle of penalizing us. So we have a test. We're going to test what was just taught. The teacher is going to test you. Very likely you're going to make quite a few mistakes. As you're doing this test, you're almost reluctant to answer the question because there's a high likelihood you're going to get it wrong. Th that's one thing, by the way, that I like about the matching pairs that we have now in the new version that I'm testing on iOS and which will eventually be available on all our platforms that you can get it wrong and very quickly, you know, okay, oh, that one isn't right. So, you know, maybe th these are the pairs that match. In other words, do things in a way that you're easily rewarded and not so easily knocked down. Because I think maintaining our motivation is so important. And we have to bear in mind that the process of learning a language is, is one of it's a slow process. First of all, we shouldn't have expectations that we're going to learn anything very quickly. And it's sort of like peeling layers of an onion or I've compared it to a jigsaw puzzle. Slowly, slowly things become, you know, clearer to us. So if at first I, I hear the divisions, you know, where a word ends and where the next word begins, but I don't know what the words mean, but still I can accept that as a step in the right direction, wherever it's possible to say, good, you know, you did that. That's why we have our statistics at link so that when we're in that long period where we don't have the impression that we're improving, at least the statistics tell me that I've been active and I've created links and I've read so many words and I've listened to so many hours because I know personally that if I am active, then I will learn. That's the advantage of this idea of having a challenge where you're trying to maintain your streak because even though you may not feel you've improved that day, at least if you maintained your streak, you did something, you're rewarding yourself for your level of activity. Because even though learning a language is a slow process, if you stay with it, if you remain active, you are going to improve, even though very often you don't really feel that you're improving. So my, the, the main message today is reward yourself for what you can do. Don't criticize yourself for what you're not capable of doing, there will be many moments when you perhaps disappoint yourself and you shouldn't, you know, emphasize that sort of disappointment or frustration. You should give your credit, 
give yourself credit for things that you are doing, whether it is hearing something, whether it is, you know, if you're studying Russian and you notice more and more, you're seeing the letter that we think is P actually as an R, you know, in the Cyrillic alphabet, all of these things that seem frustratingly difficult to do, not because they're difficult, but because our brain isn't getting used to it. And wherever we have an opportunity to recognize that we have stepped forward, taken a step forward, or at least that our uh, statistics at link show us that we have been active, we should say, we should accept the credit for that. You're doing well. And this might sound sort of silly, you know, how very often now in kids sporting events, they want to give everybody a prize. It's not a matter of giving everybody a prize. Obviously, if you have a race, somebody came first, second and third, but language learning isn't a race. Language learning is a long, uh, long distance run where you have to develop stamina. And one thing that's going to feed that stamina is giving yourself credit for what you're doing, what you're achieving and how active you are. Okay, so, so let's have a look at how these statistics might be motivating. So I decided to put a little effort into Turkish. So over the last three days, I've been doing quite a bit of listening. So I may not have the sense that I've necessarily improved a lot, but I see that I've put a lot of effort into listening in the language and I, reminding myself of this level of activity is rewarding. If I check, uh, you know, words of reading, I'll also see that I've read, you know, 1,800 words. Um, this is, you know, I, you need to remind yourself that being active is going to get you there. Obviously, if I look at, you know, this month, I'll see that all this activity is in the last few days. Uh, but if I get back to the last seven days, and if I look at uh, what I've been links created, I've also been active. So it's just a minor thing, uh, you know, my coins, I'm exceeding my daily, albeit a very modest daily target. Uh, I have on occasion when I've been in a, a challenge, I've set a much more demanding target. I've set a target of let's say 400 coins a day, uh, which is then tough. You've got to work to, to, to hit that. The hundred coins is very easy to hit, you know, create a few links, a few links, listen a little bit and you're there. So, uh, just to show you that there are ways you can use, uh, your statistics at link to remind yourself that you are being active. And if you believe, and you should believe that if you're active, you're going to improve, then that should be, uh, motivating to you. And, uh, before I end the video, I thought I would direct you to a couple of videos that I did on related subjects not so long ago. Uh, one talks about motivation, uh, how to stay motivated, and the other talks about frustrations. And obviously, if we can reward ourselves, we can stay motivated and we can avoid frustration. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.